Welcome to Planet Rock Live. Planet Rock is our children's ministry here at the Rock Church and World Outreach Center in San Bernardino, California. It is our mission to teach the Word of God to children all over the globe. I hope you're ready to have some fun. My name is Teacher Turbo, and today we're talking about strength. And no, not this strength. We're talking about God's strength. That's right, boys and girls. In today's lesson, you're going to learn how when we are weak, God is strong. All we have to do is call upon God and He will give us His strength to overcome any of our weaknesses. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. So sit back and pay attention and let's get ready to experience Planet Rock Live now. My God is strong. He'll do anything big or small. Once again to another exciting episode of I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. This is where we guide you through the weird, the wacky, the totally bonkers stories of the Bible. And they're all 100% true. Now today's lesson is completely action packed. Well, it's about time. It's getting boring around here. It all starts with two of the most terrible, wicked, evil people to ever rule a country. Evil King Ahab and his wicked queen, Jezebel. Jezebel! Oh, that's scary. Seriously? Ahab and Jezebel. Jezebel! were so evil that God punished them by sending a drought. Oh dear! Anything but a drought! Wait, what's a drought? It's when there's no rain, no water for weeks and weeks. Everything gets hot and dusty and dies. See, Ahab and Jezebel... Jezebel! <laughs> 
Stop it! Worshipped an evil god named Baal. The entire nation of Israel was forced to worship this false evil god. Except for one man. You may have heard of him. He's kind of regarded as a Bible superhero. The prophet Elijah. Oh, finally, someone with a normal name. Elijah went before the king and queen, which had to be kind of scary, because they had 450 prophets of Baal, and he was just one guy. But Elijah said, Bring your 450 prophets of Baal and meet me at the top of Mount Carmel. Who is that? Sorry, it's how I picture Elijah. He looks like Gandalf from Lord of the Rings. Bilbo Baggins. So Elijah went to the top of Mount Carmel. I think it's pronounced Caramel? No, it's Mount Carmel. It's a real place in the Middle East. You can Google it. And he met with the 450 prophets of Baal and also thousands of people from the nations of Israel. And he declared that it was going to be a trial by fire. Fire! So Elijah... Fire! Are you done? I think so. So Elijah... Fire! Can I please finish? Can it, horn head? Sorry. There's an awful lot of yelling in this episode. Anyway, Elijah met with the prophets of Baal, and he declared, The God who answers by fire will be the one true God. Fi no. Fire. So the prophets of Baal, they build an altar. They put a sacrifice on it, and they dance and sing and chant around, begging the god Baal to send fire from heaven to burn up the sacrifice. And nothing happened. What did Elijah do? He started the smack talk. Maybe your god Baal is on vacation. Maybe he's using the bathroom. Or perhaps taking a nap and needs to be woken up. <laughs> I like this guy. And so the prophets sing and dance and go even crazier. Still nothing. And then Elijah takes his offering, gets it soaking wet with water, and quietly says a prayer, begging God to show Israel that he is the one true God. As soon as that prayer leaves his lips, fire from heaven shoots down from the sky and burns it all up. Can I say it now? Yes, you can say it now. Fire! And then, and then the drought was finally over, it rained, and they all lived happily ever after. Not exactly. There's still no rain, so Elijah told a servant to go to a cliff and look out over the sea to see if there is any sign of any clouds. What do you think happens next? Will they finally get rain? What about Queen Jezebel? <laughs> Stop doing that! Well, you're gonna find out in today's lesson. Professor, it's time to hit the button. As long as we don't do that Jezebel thing again, I'm fine. The showdown on top of Mount Carmel proved to the entire nation of Israel that God was the real God and that Baal, the so-called God of the weather, was not. The nation celebrated that God was the God who answered by fire. It was a pretty awesome moment. Elijah declared that God was about to send a great rain upon the land. That was important because it had been a long time since it had rained in Israel. King Ahab knew he was defeated, so he took off in his chariot, racing toward his home. What happened next was so incredible. The Bible says that God gave Elijah special strength. Elijah started running. He ran so fast that he passed Ahab's chariot and horses. He didn't stop there. He ran 17 miles without stopping. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. Isn't that incredible? Meanwhile, King Ahab went to his wife, the evil Queen Jezebel, and told her all about what Elijah had done on Mount Carmel. When the queen heard how Elijah had defeated the prophets of Baal, she said, I will make sure Elijah is dead by this time tomorrow. She sent a messenger to Elijah to tell him of her plans to get rid of him. When Elijah heard that Queen Jezebel was coming after him, he ran for his life. Finally, he collapsed under a tree. He was exhausted, weary, and sad. He prayed, I have had enough, Lord. Take my life. He was so tired of fighting against evil that he was just ready for God to take him to heaven. But God wasn't done with Elijah. An angel showed up and woke Elijah up from his sleep. He showed Elijah that he had brought him a cake and some water. The angel said, get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. 
In the midst of Elijah's weakest moment, God gave him strength to carry on. God will do the same for us. When we are sad, weak, or depressed, God will strengthen us so that we can do whatever he's called us to do. That is exactly what we're going to learn about today in our lesson. Hi kids, good to see you today. Seymour here. I'm here with Braddy Betty. I, I mean my sister Betty. And um, this week's cool memory verse is <clears throat> Isaiah 40, 29. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. This verse is a tricky one and hard to understand. Um, do you understand it, Betty? Can you say it? Duh, Seymour. Of course I can. I can say it clearer than you can, Seymour, and it's not that tricky or hard to understand. <clears throat> Isaiah 40, 29. He gives power to the weak and... Wait, wait, I gotta ask you a serious question. Who is he talking about? Is he talking about God when he says he? Well, of course, Seymour, he or God will give power to the weak. Well, if God can do anything, why does he give us a day? I mean, then he could say, Isaiah 40, 29, he gives us days to the week. Like, maybe God could give us another Saturday each week? That would be fun. Seymour, it's not that kind of week he's talking about here. He's talking about someone who is not very that person is weak, and will, God will give him power to become strong. Like in the Bible story we're learning about today, where Elijah was weak, and God made him strong. But Seymour, I was right in the middle of reciting the verse for the boys and girls. <clears throat> Isaiah 40, 29. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Hmm. Wait, Betty, then why doesn't he give strength to the weak and power to the powerless? I don't know, Seymour. That's just how the verse is written. Let me say it again so we can memorize it. Okay. <clears throat> Isaiah 40, 29. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. So that is a cool verse to know, Betty. I'm going to say it again, too. Isaiah 40, 29. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. So Seymour, if you feel sad or weak or depressed like Elijah was, you can pray and God will help you get out of it. Oh, yeah, Betty. He always wants to help us be strong so we can beat up our sisters. Uh, uh, I mean, the devil. And uh, when we don't think that we can. <laughs> right, Seymour. Are you ready? Let's say it one last time. This time, boys and girls, and Betty too. Repeat the verse after me. <clears throat> Isaiah 40, 29. Isaiah 40, 29. He gives power to the weak. He gives power to the weak. And strength to the powerless. And strength to the powerless. Yay! Way to go, kids. Well, we're going to say goodbye for now. See you next time. Yeah, way to go, kids. Bye. Bye. All right, guys, let's get ready to worship God right now. I want you guys to stand up to your feet, close your eyes, get your hearts ready to worship Him. Today we're learning about how God can give us strength and how through God we can do anything because He's been great, He is awesome, and He is amazing. So let's go ahead and get ready to worship everybody. This song is called Great Are You, Lord.
our lungs So we pour out our praise We pour out our praise It's your breath in our lungs So we pour out our praise to you only Great are you, Lord You give life so strong and so amazing and us as your children Father you work amazing things through us and I thank you for that Father we just pray that right now we just learn to call on your presence to call on your strength whenever we need it Father God when life's troubles comes we know that we can always call to you and you will always be there Jesus in your name we pray Hey boys and girls, in our Bible story today, we saw how God used Elijah to perform an awesome miracle. God used Elijah to defeat the prophets of Baal, and then God sent rain on Israel. Then God empowered Elijah to run 17 miles non-stop. Elijah ran so fast that he overtook King Ahab's chariot. Now I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. Right now, after all of these things, life began to take an unexpected turn of events. Elijah got a little bit rattled. Something had happened. 
And he got to the point where he was like, oh my gosh, what's going on? And that brings me to point number one. Sometimes life doesn't go how you expect. Now, after that huge victory with the prophets of Baal, Elijah thought, man, I should be celebrated. Instead, he was hunted by the queen. Life was supposed to get easier, not harder. Elijah's thinking, what is going on? How did life do what it's doing to me now? Well, check this out, boys and girls. Usually, after a huge spiritual victory that we have with God, the enemy is right there to trip you up and to make you think what you did is not important and what God did through you really wasn't that effective. Well, boys and girls, that began to kind of wear on Elijah. It wore on his heart. He began to get depressed. He felt, oh my gosh, life's not worth it. I don't want to do this. It's just not happening. It's too much for me. I'm overwhelmed. Now listen to this. That brings me to point number two. Life's ups and downs can make you tired. Boys and girls, he was carrying this weight. It was heavy on him. And guys, we are not designed to carry these kinds of pressures all by ourselves. It wears on us. It makes us tired. It even makes us feel like we can't go on any further. I mean, come on, you heard Elijah's prayer. He was like, Lord, I'm done with this life. It's over, I'm tired, take me away, just kill me. But God is like, no, that is not the plan for you. We have so much to do and I wanna have the victory. And that brings me to point number three. When I am weak, God gives me strength. Now, boys and girls, to illustrate this, I'm gonna bring one of my friends up here. Uh, Sam, can you come here? Go ahead and take my place. All right, now, what I have for you is I wanna show you. Sam's got some dumbbells in his hand and he's gonna hold them out, right? As long as he can. Go ahead and do that. Go ahead and hold them out, stretch them out. Now, these weigh a certain amount of pounds and over time, he will eventually begin to get tired, right? Really, Sam? That's all? Oh my gosh, this must be a lot of weight for him. And he is not designed to carry that. But check this out. When God is with you and he's on your side, he supports you in a way that makes those weights feel so much easier and lighter. Now let's try it again, all right? Go ahead and hold up this one, all right? Now what God does is when you're holding on to the pressures of life and they begin to wear on you and they begin to feel a little bit heavy, God comes alongside you and he carries the weight for you. He gives you the strength that you need to make it through, almost to the point where this doesn't even feel heavy, right? Uh -huh. And it feels like you can do this all day, right? You can keep going and keep, matter of fact, we're already holding this longer than we did earlier. Good job, Sam. With God, you have strength. Thanks a lot, buddy. I appreciate it. Now, boys and girls, God is here for you. God is always there. And when the ups and downs of life begin to wear on you and begin to make you feel like you can't go on any farther, reach out to God. Lift up your voice to Him. Call upon the name of God and He will be there for you. He is with you and He loves you and He wants you to know that in this life, you don't have to do it by yourself. Lean on God, go to God, stretch out to Him. When you need strength, He is there to give it to you because why? He loves you. I'll see you again next time, boys and girls. God bless you. Oh, hey, boys and girls. Wasn't that a great message today? I'm so glad that you were able to join us for today's service and learn about God's strength and how when we're weak, all we gotta do is call upon the Lord. But listen, before you log off, before you close out that little browser, I wanna do one last thing with you guys. I have five short things that I wanna tell you. Let me go ahead and tell you the first thing. The first thing I want you to know is that God loves you. Yeah, you heard me right, boys and girls. God loves you, and I want you to say that. So wherever you are, I want you to point your thumb back at yourself and say, God loves me. There you go. Listen, I know it's crazy, but sometimes people forget that God actually loves us. But I want you to remember that every single day, God loves you and he shows us constantly that he loves us. The second thing I wanna tell you guys right here is about sin. And I may say, Teacher Turbo, why sin? Well, listen, boys and girls, a long time ago, 
sin actually came into our lives. And if you see this, sin ended up separating us from God. I know, but I want you to know something. This is not what God wanted. God did not want us to be separated. You see, God wants us together. So he did what he knew was best. And that was to send his son Jesus to die on the cross for us. You see, when Jesus came down to die on the cross for us, he ended up bringing us back together like this. I know, isn't that wonderful? We no longer had to be separated from God. Instead, we could be together once again. Now, boys and girls, I have something else important to tell you. You see this right here. In order for us to become Christians, we have to accept Jesus into our hearts. When we accept Jesus into our hearts, we become Christians. Now, you're probably saying, well, Teacher Turbo, I want to do that. I want to become a Christian. Now, before we do that, we have to do one more important thing. You have to actually show God that you want to accept Jesus into your hearts. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that right now. I'm going to go ahead and count to three. When I count to three, I want you, wherever you are, to raise your hand up high so that we can pray along with you to accept Jesus into your hearts. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Put your hands up high wherever you are. Hey, good job for putting your hands up. I'm so proud of all of you guys who have your hands up ready to accept Jesus into your hearts. Listen, let's do this together. I want all of us to be in agreement. So let's all bow our heads, close our eyes, and pray along with me. Ready? Here we go. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for me. Jesus, come into my heart, take away my sins, wash my heart white as snow. I am yours and you are mine. I receive you now. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, good job boys and girls. I am so excited for all of you who had your hand up and decided to accept Jesus into your hearts. But listen, even more than me, did you know that right now there is a big old party in heaven because you decided to accept Jesus into your hearts. It's crazy, but it's true. Now boys and girls, before you leave, I want you to do this. Go ahead and grab your older sister, your older brother, your mom, your dad, whoever's around you, and have them help you with this part. At the bottom of this video, I want you guys to click on the link that says, I received Jesus. We wanna to get to know who you are and congratulate you for accepting Jesus into your hearts. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. We want you to remember never to rely on your strength, but on God's strength. Until next time, God bless.